Welcome to Awesome Cast 96, live from our studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg. That's who I am. Uh, and uh, we're uh, and with me again is uh, Rob De La Creta. Hi. Don't mind him. He's playing Draw Something. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> You're Drawsome. Uh, hey, yeah, I'm. Um, this is a first actually for Awesome Cast. This is my first time being at work in the studio with other people in the studio. Yeah. So there may be some cameos, uh, uh behind yeah. you there. There's stuff going on. It looks like, there it is. looks like something's about the land behind you from all the lights. Well, it's actually, what is behind me? Um, there's like one really bright window. We can kind of do that. So like that, whoop, it's a camera. It's backwards. So that over there <laughs> is the shipping container. You might remember I'm mm. petting the shipping container. It's nice. The nice shipping container. Nice. Um, wow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, because uh, we just got back from New South by and all those crazy jobs, there's nothing in the studio. It's all empty. And the sun's out, too, which is nice. Nice. Excellent. And also over on the couch is Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com, which is up this week. It is up this week. And doing really good. You guys You're? you guys have been pumping out the stories this week. Well, that's what we're there for. You're starting to become my source for game news. Good. <laughs> now if I can get paid to do it and not go to work. Well, you're the boss of that one, that'd so. That'd be awesome. I know, I'm working on it. All right. Yeah, you get the hips up first. All right. Hits, not hips. <laughs> get, get your hip up, hips up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, anyways, this is the awesome cast where uh, we talk geek news and, and, and just... Uh, what was the old thing we used to say? Show our nerd wangs? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I am not showing anyone my my nerd wang. Sure about that? Oh, it's on my shirt. Uh, <laughs> it's on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but Darn hey, it. we're uh, here live at live.sorgatronmedia.com. If you want to join us Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. And uh, get in on this. Uh, like, uh, Chick Chris is tw- joining us in the chat room so far. Um Oh, and a few others that have not spoken yet. Hello. Um, Silent Ninja, of course. And uh, and you can uh, uh, follow us over at AwesomeCast.com. Contact at AwesomeCast.com or uh, on Twitter at AwesomeCast. We're also on Facebook and Google+. Plus. Just look us up and uh, and continue conversation. Tag the show AC96 if you want to keep that all together. Uh, so let's get right into it. We got a little bit of, uh, you know, I, 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 I threw out, uh, you know, as I've been... <laughs> doing lately uh, uh just just see what other people are talking about to see if there's anything we missed in our news stories um jeez <laughs> i'm gonna be i'm gonna be playing the, the uh, draw something song for you here soon rob <laughs> um but uh douglas durda father spoon from should i drink that.com reminded me that uh there's an invasion of droid troublemakers to our hipster instagram that we've been using for a while here um, I didn't realize until today how much hate there was for this. For There's Instagram. a lot of hate. There's a lot Instagram. of hate, and it all came out. I mean, I don't know if I've just not been in the circles for this, but it all seems to have just exploded on Twitter if today. If you're on Android and you're using Instagram now, you're ruining my life. That's what's happening. Is that what's happening? How is that true? Well, <laughs> it's this. <laughs> no, your argument is right not now. valid. Okay. Your <laughs> argument is not valid. My argument's not valid. No, it's it's it is wholesomely not valid, and you're correct. But it is a funny <laughs> dynamic that you see because yeah. prior to today, the entire Instagram um, atmosphere has been driven by nothing but iOS users because there was no uh, no other way for it to happen. Right. Mm-hmm. And like as we all kind of know, there is a distinct like sort of taste difference between iOS users and Android users. People make the decision to go Android or iOS, and the sort of thing that you see on android users like you can notice the difference in the way that they use the application for instance like pretty much everybody that i follow on uh everybody that i follow on instagram they follow like you know a handful of people yeah to start with they follow like their friends or whatever yeah um but i've noticed a lot of the android folks because like 15 people followed me today and then i realized that oh the android app came out they they're following like 80 to 290 people jeez they haven't posted a single photo yet jeez (laughs) so it's also like you know you're on ios you're into like curating your experience and stuff like that and only following the things you actually want to pay attention to Mm -hmm. whereas the 
a lot of the the folks who use Android, not to say that the people who use iOS are super smart. There's plenty of teenage morons on there, but um, uh, they they tend to be the people who are not necessarily into curating their experience. They could also be the person who walked into the Verizon store and said, "Hey, I want the one with the big screen." Yeah, and they're just going to say, "I'm going to follow everybody I can find." I feel like you're talking down to me. <laughs> I'm not talking I down know. to you specifically I know, because I, I would expect better from Mr. Chashi. Oh, no, but, uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I am stereotyping Android users, if that's what you mean. I, I'm sure Chashi's only going to do the most uh, artful and tasteful of pictures on Instagram. I haven't used it. Yet. Yeah. But oh, and... Well, I mean, what's what's going to make me use it if I, if I didn't bother to use it today when it came out? I don't know. Maybe uh, yeah, we haven't gotten for the to it same though. reason that there were plenty of iOS users that didn't use it the first day it came out. Mm-hmm. Something I mean, I didn't use it for like the first six months that it existed or something. But um, another another bug. If we're gonna talk about it in Instagram for a minute, so the the, the filters. Yeah, we talk, we talk about photo filters. I know this is this is a, a something that AJ harps on quite a bit. So the thing is, you take a picture on your Instagram and you can post it without a filter at all. You can post it with a filter. You can add a uh, circle blur or a, um, a tilt shift effect or little cut off edgy things. You can do all that if you want to. And, uh, people make fun of that effect and say that like it's terrible and everything and that you should use no filter ever. And as somebody who, uh, I retweeted like a little bit ago said, like you realize that this has been happening to photography since the advent of photography <laughs> like no photograph is pure it's it's not possible well i, I there there's only one uh anti instagram message and we were talking about this pre show that i actually agreed with today and that was uh chris who said that it really irritated her when people were using instagram to send out pictures <laughs> of things that were a specific color <laughs> And then applying wow. a filter. Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Sorry. Apparently Sword wasn't paying attention to my feed. I was being accosted by coworkers. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You know. <laughs> Good job there, Chief. But yeah, so I mean, that completely makes sense, and I agree with it. Uh, if you're going to send out a picture and then talk about the color or something, you yeah, well, I mean, it's, should it's, put a filter on it. It's also... It's all about aggregating your feeds and all that kind of nonsense. So, like, when I post a photo on Instagram, I'm I'm that guy. It goes to I post a tweet about it. It goes to my Flickr. It goes to my Tumblr. And by all of those processes, it actually ends up on my Facebook feed twice. Sorry about that. Can't really do anything about it. Um, and the problem that I have is that I know that there are plenty of people who enjoy seeing my photos. They've told me who don't follow me on three out of those four services. So they don't know or they can't see it. And also because there is no way to see Instagram photos without the app, there are plenty of people who can't see it because of that too. Yeah. yeah so it's all part of my content stream for the same reason that whenever I post a new set of photos on Flickr, it automatically posts an update to Facebook saying, hey, check out this thing because I can tell you I have like 30 followers on Flickr and I have a lot more people who follow my stuff on Facebook. Yeah, and it's becoming integrated more. So, I mean, well, the biggest complaint about this, too, is, okay, so now everybody's in on it on Android, and, you know, presumably, I don't know, maybe we'll get a Windows version at some point. But um, is it a problem that there's no website of this, you think? I, I don't know. I mean, I kind of I like, mean, I like it, the atmosphere that it's created. Yeah, it, it's kind of closed. It's kind of got that little half-ish thing that you are segregated a little bit but yeah. but you've like the situation you just described like again i i make sure it gets tweeted flickered everything uh when i when i put a picture out if i think it's you know applicable uh which is most of the time but i mean at certain mm-hmm. certain points where i think no this is just for instagram uh but but that's really opening it up and it just integrates with everything else it's just a tool that gets used with everything you're already at yeah, I think this mess is less of a problem of people like us creating noise and more of a problem of the applications that we use every day not being able to handle the level of noise that they need to be able to filter. Mm-hmm. It's just like, a, you know, like take it bare bones. The human body experiences plenty of noise every day. Like over there, there's somebody rattling some wrenches. I'm not paying attention to it, but I recognize that it exists. Yeah. This is your Twitter feed every day. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I mean, uh, there's, I mean, you know, like I get a lot of a lot of people saying, "Hey, didn't you see this on Twitter today?" I'm like, "No." There's about 15 people that I selectively actually watch on Twitter. 
mm. you know, including you guys and, and some other select people. If if the stuff wasn't in that circle, it's coming direct to, directly to my phone. I, that's that's my screen. That's my right. like you guys are my aggregators, you know. Um, so I, I, you know, when you have as many, you know, start getting those followers up there or start getting random stuff. I mean, it just you start losing it. You know, I, I find sitting there in Hootsuite and watching a Twitter feed like ridiculous anymore. The only way I can go through that is with uh, Flipboard. Yeah, I mean, you have to, you have to, I think we've talked about this quite a few times, is that in all the services that we use, it just becomes like this super noisy thing. And it's, it's really, it seems kind of silly to put the onus of, of controlling your noise down to other people. Like, you know, I had that, that session at PodCamp about sucking less at Twitter, which is partly about keeping your own noise down. You do it as much as you can, but at the same point, I'm also a proponent of sharing everything you do because sharing things you could, you do can have such a great effect on like the yeah. world in general. Yeah. Like sharing your ideas is super important. So if somebody else decides that they think that I don't want to hear about cars because they've never heard me talk about cars, they could be completely wrong because I am in fact a gearhead and that decision hurts me. I'm much better off making the decision about what I want than they are. Definitely. Definitely. So, uh, so Chachi, you think we'll we'll see some Instagram from you here soon? Nope, nope. You're not you're not much of a picture guy. No, not really. I mean, I, I spent I, I said I was going to take the gnome with me everywhere. That lasted what four days. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a matter of attention. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Although the Instagram would be fun for the gnome pictures. I, I make enough noise as it is. Mm-hmm. But I, I do I really need to make photo noise as well? Considering I'm not really a photographer, my pictures suck. I don't really consider myself a <laughs> photographer either, but I enjoy doing it. But I'm not saying I'm competing with like what Rob does. Oh, I'm competing. Like, you're that's no. the problem. You're a competitive person, and you try to compete with Rob yeah. does. I mean, at the same time, like just because I post photos on Instagram and I happen to be a photographer does not does not I mean know. that I intend for all of my photos on Instagram to be of any kind of like quality. I know. I'm messing. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I posted something on Instagram was like, "Hey, look at this like piece of chicken." It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really I just, I, I, mean, I use it as an extension, so. Yeah, I mean, for me, Instagram is a photo tweet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, them. hey, look at this interesting thing, or this thing that happened, or like, hey, I'm in this city and I saw this cool thing, or like, I was just at, um, I was just at a, um, a trade show for work that is like a, a, a health-driven trade show, and you would think that, that kind of stuff is boring, but they had like, 11 mapped projector screens and it was ridiculous and i just said like you know you thought trade shows were boring it's just a picture tweet that's all it is exactly like that's my interface for doing twit pics basically is how i treat it yep. so unless yeah unless, you know unless there's somewhere i wanted to go somewhere else like my tumblr then i drop it into camera plus and pretty much do the same thing i just have more options than what instagram gives me so well other than that i want to go to a story that's probably going to tick off chachi actually he's the one that brought it up to me what uh <laughs> <laughs> Ashton Kutcher, your favorite person, Chachi, yes. he is set to play Steve Jobs in a biopic called Jobs. I can't say what I think. <laughs> I mean, you, you got to say, based on looks, he's he's pretty much a dead winner. He is. He is. Uh, the funny thing is, this is an independent film. Um, now, this is not. There's still another film going to come out based on the biography, <sighs> the official biography that was optioned by, I think, Sony. Something. So there's going to be more than one. So you're going to have yeah. uh, you're going to have a barrage of Steve Jobs Jobs films coming out, and it's going to be ridiculous. Why can't can I, can I make from... a rip off of the independent film and call it the Pirates of the Pirates of Silicon Valley? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, we already have one, right? I mean, <laughs> I don't need a biopic about Steve Jobs. I already have a biopic about Steve Jobs. Yeah, but that was like. In yeah, I don't the care. 90s. There's so much more that happened. Uh, let me change Just it. Just before he came back and revolutionized let everything me, and put let, I in front of it. Let me, it's full of lies. Let me change it. I, I don't need an independent biopic about Steve Jobs. Because the non-independent biopic will tell me everything that Pirates of the Silicon Valley didn't get to cover because it was old. Hmm. Yeah. True. Okay. okay, so we don't need to rehash that kind of stuff. No. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, it never hurts to tell the same story from two different viewpoints. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, Ashton Kutcher sucks. Uh, this, yeah. you know, alternately, uh, it, it came around today. Um, 
that this has been apparently approved by Waz, the Ashton Kutcher selection. By by Waz? Well, uh, by Steve Wozniak. Waz is not the Waz that people put him on a pedestal for. I'd hate to yeah, break yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Waz is an over wait middle-aged dude who has a lot of fame from doing something really awesome many many years ago but as far as being like really connected to that stuff he's not yeah he hasn't been for years yeah right so he carries an android he does carry an android yeah (laughs) yes he's a traitor to that (laughs) (laughs) exactly um and other news uh so uh, i had a really interesting discussion with aj the other night about this story um and and uh, he he tweeted about it uh, starting Monday, and I saw there was some more conversation about it. Uh, so OMG Pop CEO uh, has been <laughs> very vocal in his tweets about the one member that uh, did not come along to the Zynga party. So have you got? Do we talk about this on the show yet? No, I, no. I don't think we because it happened between this show and last show. Yeah. Yeah. Did the whole thing happen between? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, apparently, to break the story down, uh, this guy had another app outside of OMG Pop, which you know, I guess OMG Pop was fine with, you know, for their contract and everything. And of course, when they go to Zynga, they pretty much just fire everybody and sign them on new contracts. Uh, I, I guess that's pretty typical for you know buyouts like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy, uh, and they they wanted him to either take the app from the app store or give up all ownership of it uh, to work for Zynga, basically. Uh, and he said no, and he, he declined the rehire to Zynga and, and left. And he was like, oh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do my own thing. What, what's, what's up, Josh? I found a remote control in your laptop. <laughs> Is that, in, yeah, that, that explains? That, I believe that was a media center PC. Yeah. That, wow. ex- that explains why there's an infrared sensor in front of it now. That would be. That would be. Okay. Wow. I, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Um, it popped out. I so didn't he even push it. He basically went out and said that, you know, he didn't, you know, he didn't want to work for a company they didn't believe in, you know, That's their lame. values and everything. Uh, the CEO of OMG Pop, uh, Dan Porter, I believe his name is here. Yes. <laughs> he says the one OMG Pop employee who turned down Zynga was the weakest one on the whole team. Selfish people make bad games. Good riddance. Yep. Amongst other things. Yes. So, Rob, have you been joined, uh, following this story? Well, I mean, there's not much to follow about it. I don't really have strong opinions about it. I still enjoy the app. As far as I'm concerned, it was a poor move by the CEO, but I don't really care about the CEO mm-hmm. because it's just a game. He's not CEO anymore. He just got. I mean, he's not CEO anymore. <laughs> Formerly CEO, now guy with lots of money in pockets. Yes, yes. <laughs> guy with lots of money in yeah. pockets. But I mean, as as far as I'm um, like, this reads very obviously as somebody who had something against whatever this developer did for whatever reason. Um, not necessarily the thing involving the app store, but you know, for for all we know, like the the developer stole the wife of the CEO or something stupid like that. There's just like underlying drama, and he felt the need to blurt it out on Twitter at a time when which his Twitter account was extremely public. So like that's on them. I don't really care. It's not my business. It, he shouldn't have made it other people's business, and it was a very poor you know uh, publicity move, PR move, sure, but beyond that like it's not news it's sensationalized this is like fox media to me all right all right <laughs> <laughs> so you're not you're not installing uh draw uninstalling draw something like uh aj is i'm playing it at the moment i'm slightly frustrated because there's a bug where all your colors don't show up and i i i had a lot of colors i haven't seen that one yet huh yeah but otherwise it's still yeah it's still going to make millions and still uh, what, yeah, what, like, was, you know, uh, it's one of those things where it's not going to affect anybody realistically, and this will be something that people will get over in a few days, and nobody's going to care, and this guy will continue to make more money. Yeah, exactly. And and, and I think it was uh, Cindy Klosky who's been on the show uh, uh, responded uh, to his you know uninstall draw something to you know if you if you want to do uninstall you know all the software by companies that CEOs are kind of dicks, uh, then you, there's not going to be much left. You have a pretty empty iPhone. Yeah. Why, why do you? Have <laughs> Why do you have an iPhone? <laughs> yeah, why do you have an iPhone if you have a thing against with. CEOs who are dicks? So, but uh, but there you go. And plus, I already paid my ninety nine cents for OMG Pops Draw Something and Words with Friends. And even, while I don't get into Farmville, I've already given them my money. So, you know, not that it'd be effective on my end either. 
So um, another app that has had a little bit of trouble here, according to The Verge. Uh, <laughs> Foursquare, Foursquare revokes location at API for Girls Around Me app. I love this story a lot. <laughs> so, uh, were you t- were you were you were you using the app when they revoked it, Rob? No, I found out about it because of the story that yeah, caused Four yeah. Foursquare to revoke it because it's an app that nobody realized existed. Apparently, no, no. <laughs> and then somebody wrote an article about how silly it was because somebody mentioned it to them at a party or something, and they realized how really creepy it was. So, the premise of this app: you load up this horrible thing, which honestly I had installed until yesterday, but I installed it after they turned it off because I wanted to see like how creepy it was. So it basically it loads up like a little map. And then I, I also love that not only is this the creepiest app in the App Store, or was, it is like the biggest scam in the App Store next to the big red button app. Because So you hit the little radar button, and this little thing like comes across the screen, and it scans for all the girls who have checked in on Foursquare over a certain period of time. So basically you can figure out where all the girls near you are. To be fair, you can also set it to guys or everyone if you want to. So, I mean, keep... But this is using public data with Foursquare. Yeah, it's public data. It's, it's Foursquare. It's Granted, Foursquare has control over the API. They can yeah. decide what they want to do with it. Um, but my favorite part about this app, so in the upper right-hand corner, there's that little power meter that goes from green to red. And the more times you use the radar scanning thing, the less power you get. And the only way to get more power so you can do more scanning things is to make an in-app purchase for like $1.99. <laughs> so you're talking about this little... <laughs> This little green thing up here in the corner. That's the scanny thing. In the top right is the power meter with the little <laughs> dial and okay. the green and the red. Oh, so it's not even showing you everybody until you get up. Oh, wow. You have to have enough power to do a scan. And if you run out of power because you did too many scans because you're too much of a creep, you have to pay money to get more power to do more scans. Wow. And even if the scan doesn't work, like if you get the app right now or whatever, because I think it is still in the app store. It just doesn't work. No, I think it's been pulled because it doesn't work. Okay. Um... But every time you do a scan, even if it can't connect to Foursquare, you still lose power by like little increments. So, good job, guys. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's. Those people. And, and the thing is, I mean, it, it was just, it really was the marketing around. Because again, it's Foursquare. You could easily do the same kind of thing in Foursquare. And I can, I can look up all the girls around me. You just hit the nearby button and put it on everybody. And I don't know if you can filter it for gender from there, but you can completely do that. Uh, this just like made it more putting the idea in your head, I guess. So, yeah, you know, that's like sorting through Craigslist, but with a GPS coordinate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, what the site even says here, use it to see where hot girls and guys are hanging out in your area, view their photo and make contact. I also like how it presumes that everybody uses Foursquare as hot. Well, the picture's there, so you can separate the hot ones from the non-hot ones. Right, sure, but it's a, you know. Ideally. Okay. <laughs> Unless they put a picture of their cat like a lot of people do. Sure. What's wrong with that? I've been pleading for people not to put a picture of a cat as their Facebook icon. I'm changing my Facebook. <laughs> for the if, if you put a picture of anything but yourself as your icon on any social network, I hate you on a deep Deep level. Yeah, I mean, I say, like, I will not follow you if you have a picture of your cat, and it yeah. says, you know, Anthony Walker. I was like, yeah. who named their cat Anthony Walker, and yeah. why is he in the name of my best friend? Yeah. And I, I'd hate to say it, really, but a uh, picture of your kid. Your kid is not your social media profile, and that's creepy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and your kid, fine. Just your kid. Yeah, that's creepy. great. That's great. I mean, uh. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I, I, I've uh, gotten a kick out of you know friend, friends of ours, Don and Jack. Uh, they have been recently on one of our boards for the other podcast. And and it, have you seen the latest in, in in Facebook groups where it puts like the picture of everybody that's you know the last like eight people that have put something on the board? Mm. Well, their both their pictures are apparently the two of them, like you know making lovey faces at each other. So it's yeah. like right next to each other. <laughs> so, anyways, um, but yeah. Creepy apps, guys. Right now, my av- my my Twitter profile pic is a Monster Haiku monster. Yes, it is. What are your thoughts on that, Robert? I'm sorry, I'm playing Draw Something. <laughs> 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 All right, other than that. Um, hey, my, my icon on Twitter is an Instagram photo. How do you like that? Mine is, too. Mine is too, actually. Um, and I cycle them through all my... I have a different... I think right now I have a different Instagram for each social network going on. 
So it's working out pretty well. Um, who's Chris, tra- Chris said she would name a cat with my name. Okay. She's also allergic to Regardless, that cat would not be able to use the internet very well, so it has no business having its picture on the How do you know? That cat is, How do you know? That cat is most likely under 13 and therefore cannot have a Facebook account. That, Legally that cat, cannot have a Facebook account. That cat could be MCSE certified. <laughs> what? I, no, it can't. Yes, it can. <laughs> no, it can't. Wow. How do you know? I, I don't even have to explain that. <laughs> It's possible. I don't know how we ended up in this in this neighborhood. Me either. How about a new neighborhood? Everybody try to uh, buy a hard drive lately? Buy a hard drive? Yeah. Nope. Is that hard to do now? It's expensive to do now because the whole floods in Taiwan and et cetera, et cetera. Oh, uh, well, sort of. I mean, I've bought plenty of hard drives over the last year. They're not crazy expensive. The real thing is that the prices were going down at a crazy exponential rate and they stopped. Mm-hmm. Mostly because of the uh, the earthquake in Japan. No, I think it was the uh, Taiwanese floods. It was some natural disaster. But, well, uh, the when um, when the name of the nuclear uh, reactor I can't remember melted down, uh, and a combination of the there was a tsunami many many months ago. Yeah. Uh, like Samsung, for instance, lost a gigantic factory. It was the one that put um, Apple's NAND chips at yeah. risk. Yeah. Well, uh, they. Apparently, uh, by the end of April, they could be uh, we could see a ten percent drop uh, in hard drive prices, which is great for me because uh, I'm definitely very hard drive needed for all of my content I create. I know AJ put a tweet out for a while ago that he had to buy a bunch of hard drives for uh, you know for some server, and it was ridiculous. Um, I for well, I don't I don't know where you've been buying yours, Rob, but ones I've been looking at. Uh, I've been looking at two and three terabyte just internal drives, and I've seen them raise almost a hundred dollars. I've been buying pretty much all of mine from Newegg. Yeah. And um, sorry, I'm drawing a dumbbell. That's why I'm looking down. Uh, we need to draw something, Cam, for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, prices have been great. Like I've probably paid twenty to thirty dollars more per drive than I would have liked. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. But when you're paying, you know, you're already at like a hundred bucks per drive or whatever for a 1.5 or two terabyte drive. As long as you remember, you know, the yesteryear of when you went to buy an 80 gig drive and it cost you 90 bucks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At least you're not buying solid state, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that. What was the, we were looking at? They were looking at a Thunderbolt drive for, with 120 gigabytes for $450. Solid state. Hmm. Crazy. It'll be fast. Yeah. Somebody, Solid state needs to become cheaper. That's the big thing. Somebody needs that, but uh, you know. So, can you just drop like a solid state drive, like right into a Drobo? Yeah. Would if, that, if you could find a full size solid state, yeah. three and a half inch SATA drive, you could just pop that in a Drobo. Because they would just recognize it. Okay. Yeah. Just a little little sign note there, but I'm looking forward <laughs> for that because I've been holding off on filling up my upgrading my Drobo for a while here, so. Uh, hey, here's some uh, news from Chachi's wheelhouse here, uh, both about Xboxes. I, I found it. You found it? It was hiding. You, you, what, what were you looking for? <laughs> that story I put in here. Okay. Oh, well, that's... Yeah, that's... It was hiding. Okay. Do you want to take this one then? I found it. No, go ahead. Go do what you were doing. <laughs> do what I was doing? Do what... <laughs> All right, we'll get to there anyways. Uh, used Xboxes can be hacked for credit card information, researchers say. Also stop, stop, computers, stop. also cell yeah, yeah. phones, stop, stop, also stop, 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 iPads. Stop. Really? Oh, this wait, is wait, a wait, thing? This out. is a what's news up, item? Time out. Really? Chachi, Chachi's got to throw this down. It's not hacking. It's not hacking. No. It's there. It's the data infor- recovery. It's the not infor- hacking. Yeah, the information's there. It never yeah. went anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't have to break any encryption or anything to get that data. I think more the point is that uh, people don't think about their game console having sensitive information on it like they do their computer i, I don't think, think about I their think phone having that information exactly. either. It, right. it, well, that, and the same problems happening there as well um so i mean you have this device with a hard drive especially Word. with the xbox with the playstation with whatever else comes out and you know even if you you deleted your account presumably you don't know what it leaves behind and if it's on the drive somebody can go in and you know do a recovery on it on the drive uh probably something a little more interesting since it's going to be formatted for an xbox I'm, i don't know if they're a different all that is is a hidden folder that's all it is yeah 
So yeah. I mean, this is this is sort of like the technology gap that we were talking about when you talk about privacy and all that stuff. None of this stuff is new. Yeah. yeah. Privacy has always been a problem. Your credit card information on your paperwork will always be a problem. Like you get your tax forms in the mail. If you put them in the trash, somebody can read them. Yes. Not new. Yeah. It's always going to be a problem. Yep. Yep. But yeah, it, it's all it is is a hidden folder. Because at the root of it, it's still just a Microsoft product. <laughs> it's still a computer. That is, no, the that is Microsoft. It's still a computer. Right. So, I mean, you hook up that hard drive to a computer, unhide folders. Yeah. Because if you pull it out, if you break, you know, I know they sell those hard drives in like their own casings or whatever, and but they're they're built into the new ones, right? Yeah. You got a newer one. Um, but that's still a regular internal hard drive. I've seen things where you can just take, like, buy a off the shelf hard drive for a lot cheaper, stick it in there, and it'll take care of it. Not anymore. Not anymore? Not with the new ones? No. Is it not removable at all? Well, I mean, you'd have to take it. You'd have to take the Xbox. Take a lot of it. That's a shame. That's a shame, especially with uh, hard drive fail rates, you know? Right. Um, And Chachi, what is this other story you got up here? This is from Chris, and Rob's going to yell at us again. But um, (laughs) he's he's going to. He is. Um, The government is watching what you do on your Xbox, (laughs) sir. (laughs) Sir. They're watching you. Oh man! Are you laughing? There's so many people who live in like wooden shacks underneath Dude, rocks. Everyone, these underneath are the privacy. Place. These are current news stories, though. This is what ah. the, this is what's making the round, sir. This is what everybody's worried about, Rob. And there, we need to address them and tell them how how much they don't need to worry about this kind of thing. This is what happens when I stop paying attention to tech news. That's what happens. <laughs> Uh, okay. Why do you not need to worry about this? Because you already have a cell phone in your pocket and they already know where you are. It has a camera on it and I don't have a connect that, that I can talk to and can see everything I'm doing when I'm playing, uh, when playing connect animals in my underwear. Yeah. I mean, because of the Patriot Act, that's why you need to stop worrying about it because there are bigger fish to fry than your game console. I am worried about it. (sighs) The government does not need to see me teabag Mike. Okay, All I heard was teabag.com. They, they, Halo, do, they do they do need to see that. Completely in Halo. Yeah. Oh, they do need to see that. Um, no, but the, the reason it was brought up is because it's been discovered that uh, terrorist cells are actually using Xbox 360s <laughs> to uh, uh, do bl- planning. Browse the internet? No, for planning purposes. Because I, They're I using mean, it for the messaging features. Yeah, for the uh, private chat rooms and everything. So they're going on, they're hooking up Call of Duty, they're starting a private party, and bam. Now they're talking about safe houses and bombing stuff. So, that's why it was brought up. Robert? Just saying, it's just another... I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm asking people to, to use their brains too much. It's a method of communication. Yes, you're being watched. There you go. <sighs> you're so angry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm a total downer this week. I'm you sorry. <laughs> Man. It's nothing we should be worried about, though. Again, they're, they, I mean, anybody anybody can. Yeah. Any of those guys can tap into whatever they want. I mean, I think we can mm-hmm. just presume that your government is watching you. Yeah. Um, but and you the kid to, you hand your credit card to at a restaurant can certainly just run away with it. He exactly. Really can. Exactly. I mean, when, when, when banks are, are getting broken into and taking your credit card, credit card information it doesn't matter that it was in my wallet it doesn't matter that i never signed up for ebay or anything else that might have gotten hacked or sony network or, or xbox or my itunes account you know i mean just by by having it is like you know if you're yeah, if mean, you're afraid of this a... stuff you need to unplug everything go live in a shack in the middle of nowhere and uh and you won't be able to play video games you yeah. play the nintendo and, that's you know, hooked up to the internet there are plenty of people who will tell you that like that shouldn't have to be the option and we should have to yada 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 and it's like that sort of attitude completely is it's ignorant to the idea that we are an information sharing society so by existing in this society you are sharing a certain amount of information hey you know what i just learned what's that don't put your balls next to the exhaust fan of the laptop because they get really warm <laughs> that's fantastic for audio listeners <laughs> that's the best thing ever uh yeah i'm talking about the drink of course it's really warm right now no he's not he's being obscene I'm completely talking about the audio drink and i'm never going to set another drink in that spot again okay <laughs> right um <laughs> where else are we <laughs> hey does anybody watch from the new youtube channels this week 
new nope. YouTube channels. New, t- new YouTube channels. Well, remember when like YouTube was dropping the millions and millions of dollars on uh, on like Shaquille O'Neal and God knows who else because uh, they figure they can make good content for YouTube. Yeah, how's that working out? You know, better than we can. Uh, well, well, there's there's a couple ones that I've been checking out actually, and here's a whole list of them. They My got, YouTube content yeah. was crap. Your YouTube what content. Is the, what is the one that is um in the screen you have up right now? It's uh, three down in the middle. <laughs> uh, Black box TV. Black box TV. Okay, it uh, like says scripted series from Anthony E. Zucker. Creator oh, of CSI, Tony. E. Oh, I'm not saying the rest of these things. Um, but but the ones that caught mine were uh, the Nerdist, of course. The Nerdist has like I don't know how many shows they have. Uh, Geek and Sundry is another one. Um, they uh, by Felicia Day is heading this one up. Uh, they've brought over Dark Horse uh, Comics. I watched a fantastic <laughs> show the other day from uh, uh, Will Wheaton playing oops, when most people playing tabletop games. Like it's literally just a half hour. He's like playing with like somebody from MythBuster, that guy from MythBusters, and 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 other people from like YouTube and stuff. And it's the most high produced board wow. game playing I've ever seen. You um, know, there's course, a lot of channels that are trying really hard, and I, I it was a fantastic example of like how hard social media and using these sort of streams can be. So Craftsman, you know, a gigantic multi billion dollar tool company. Mm-hmm. They have a channel, and they actually put out pretty good content, like once a week, twice a week. I think they're constantly on their Facebook page. They have like really highly produced episodes. They have an entire radio studio that's all decked out. Average views for episode maybe fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, this this is this is somebody that's a name on on the internet to begin with. With Felicia Day, I mean, look, sixty four thousand people have just watched her talking about things. So. Um, you know, I mean, she's already got the audience for YouTube. They're already watching the Guild on YouTube, and they're bringing those over and and bring them in like YouTube's wheelhouse for advertising and everything, and making a a, a stronger push for it and building other content around here. Paul and Storm are on this channel. Uh, uh, Sword and Laser is getting converted to a video show and put on this. Uh, I, I think they were audio only before. Um, they're doing <laughs> awesome shows, just like written by a kid. Mm. Where real directors go and pitch a movie or, or make a movie that was written by a kid. Wow. Kids yes. say the darndest things, you know? Exactly. And now it's going to be a movie. Nerdist is even more ridiculous. Their video, they had like 30 shows. And they're bringing back Kids in the Hall and they're putting new content around it. Um, it, it it's it's ridiculous. Do you watch uh, My Drunk Kitchen? I have watched My Drunk Kitchen. It's pretty much the best thing on YouTube. It is. It yes, is. You don't it's need anything stuff. else. No, 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 you don't. Um, SourceFed's the greatest thing. So on there YouTube. is SourceFed that we enjoy, but I don't know if that's like a YouTube push. Of course, WWE started putting, uh, since, you know, of course we watch wrestling since we do that other show on this network. Um, but they, they've been doing their original content. They, they just had actually a live streaming uh, pre show to WrestleMania this past Sunday, which was better quality than if you paid full price for the pay per view on WWE.com, I have to say. And I have a whole article about that over on uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Yeah, if you, you want to find out more. You want to took that down. Yeah. Thanks, Josh. Um, but they're getting pretty... I, I don't know what Shaquille O'Neal is going to do. I uh, t- Tony Hawk was this week talking about a uh, channel that he's been working with. I guess it's been up for a while uh, where he's got a whole bunch of content. Um, and it's kind of viable if my YouTube app for my Xbox was a little easier to use. I don't understand what's so hard to use about it. It's, well, how do, how do you get to one of these channels, Josh? Search. Search. You just drop a search with your keypad, you know, selecting all your letters and... It's not really Do you know how to play video games? Yes. Then it shouldn't take you that long to... And you know why I never send you a message back until they put the app on the iPhone on an Xbox? I never send you a message back either. Exactly, and that's what I'm talking about with the search. Um, yep, yeah, that's different. You're talking about delivering or typing out a whole message. Mm-hmm. But in fact, I mean, all you're doing is typing in the name of a channel or the name of a show. Mm-hmm. That's a lot shorter than sending a text or a, a message on Xbox. True, true, but the the search isn't too great for the YouTube 
because then you got everybody else and all the Fleet of Day love videos. And uh, I stuff think it works fine. <laughs> you don't know how to use it. I don't know how to use YouTube. You're holding it wrong. I must be holding it wrong. What if I stop holding the remote upside down? Yes. <laughs> It'll work better. That'll do it. But I'm doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it but it'll be interesting to see what they do with this. How weird Al Yankovic is on this. Sure. I mean, the smartest thing that they do is they take people who already have a, a successful medium, yeah. like My Drunk Kitchen, and then they give them money to make more cool stuff. Yeah. Which is what they did with My Drunk Kitchen. But also, we, we now you and I are now competing with these guys, uh, which, you know, we kind of saw coming because they were going to figure it out and start throwing money at people to do this kind of stuff. Uh, with better production values. Yeah, and the competition's like always good, man. Oh, yeah. It'll make us step up our game because we are competing with these things. I remember that was a big thing uh, with the baristas. They said, you know, people are watching this stuff on Roku. It's competing with all that stuff you're getting from NBC on the Roku. So that means they got to work harder and smarter because they don't have money. Exactly. So. And if shows like us didn't exist, then they would have no reason to try as hard as they do. Exactly. Exactly. So... Well, it'll be interesting to see what goes with that. I, I, I won't watch some because I'm kind of curious to see what, what is succeeding, what isn't. Uh, and, and what is that bar for success for these guys? Because, you know, are people expecting, you know, what kind of numbers are they expecting at this point? What I'm excited about is the idea because the more that these publishers sort of like dabble in this idea of, of producing online content and, and creating budgets for online content means the more we're going to see a pull away from putting their entire budget in the cable, which is when you're going to see things like the, you know, the AMC app for, um, for the iPad right now, you can get that app and you can watch the first full season premiere of Mad Men on that app without being an AMC subscriber. Mm -hmm. That's huge. The amount of money that they made on that from broadcast television is mind boggling. And the fact that they decided to put it on an app means that they're willing to experiment with this kind of thing. And I guarantee that there's somebody very feverishly watching the metrics of how many people actually watch that episode via the app and comparing it to broadcast. And the more that we see that number of people who watch it in an app or watch content made by Weird Al on YouTube versus whatever happens on TV, the less we're going to have this awkward problem where the people, the producers of the content really want to share their stuff for free, but they can't because they're under contracts with the publishers and the publishers are under contracts to the broadcast TV companies. Slowly these doors get broken down when the numbers go high enough. Definitely, definitely. And, and, you know, and, and there's actually another article uh, this week kind of along the same line because digital magazines kind of going through a similar transition uh, like you were talking about with AMC. Um, their numbers have doubled occurring according to The Verge, but only still make up 1% of overall sales, which, you know, they're going to. And that percentage is going to get better since print publications are, are going down in numbers. Are you, guys, are you guys watching? Any, are you guys reading anything digitally? Nope. Like, I mean, I picked up a couple books on Kindle, but I, I, yeah, I don't bug. see the reason. To me, like, I get enough stuff for free on the internet. I don't need to subscribe to Wired. You know, uh, yeah. actually, um, who was it? Is it Engadget? I, I've been, I've been looking a little bit just because it's free. I wanted to experiment and see what people are doing with magazines on here. Um, but like, uh, Engadget does this one magazine called Distro. They release every week. And it's all right, but again, it's like, okay, it's just another form for the stuff I'm getting on the internet, it seems, you know. There's no, like, nothing's nothing's really compelling me enough that I need to get it in this magazine package, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, the third question about the death of the magazine industry and the newspaper industry is, what do these forms of media provide us that were not already being provided by websites? But I guess you have to work it from the other end because all the people that are used to and enjoy the paper, the magazine style versus the otherworldly, you know, sprawling of information that we get on the Internet. Maybe mm -hmm. this is but just, the, it's, it's one of those things where people are only kind of sad about it because they saw it the way it was before it currently existed. So, you know, change is always bad. Windows XP is the ugliest thing ever, and that's terrible. But it still happens to be highly functional. And the people who grew up with Windows XP as opposed to Windows NT5, mm -hmm. they don't care. Mm -hmm. So this whole generation of people who grew up in a land that is essentially barren of magazines and newspapers, like we're really we're spending a lot of time and energy fighting for this thing that doesn't necessarily need to exist anymore. Maybe the question isn't how magazines exist and it should be how magazines fold into the media that we're already producing digitally. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Word. 
Got anything on that, Chach? Nope. I said my piece. Okay. All right. On that note, guys, I think that's what we got, all we got for today. Um... Yep. 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 Just make sure nobody else had anything else. Nope. All right. Got nothing. Uh, Rob, you are robjdlc.com. Yes. Chris robjdlc.com. Robjdlc on the Twitters. Robjdlc on the Instagrams. Robjdlc is on the Draw Somethings. <laughs> if you want to play a game, I just finished all like 18 of my current rounds. So. Yeah, I, I have a few. been sitting there for a couple days myself. So. I, w- I would play with you, but you're just going to get penises. That's fine. That's half of what I do, honestly. There was somebody that I was playing with that I couldn't figure out who she was. And I kept looking at her name going, like, Melissa M. Who's Melissa M.? It took me two weeks of playing with her to realize that it was a chick that I went to college with that I'm pretty good friends with. So now all she gets is penises. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. Nice, nice. Chachi, he's got insert coin to begin.com at Chachi says on Twitter. Yep. And that's, that's all. That's it. That's all. That's all you need to know for now. Yeah, that's all I'm at. He's over on WrestlingMayhemShow.com as well. But I don't Facebook. You don't Facebook? But I don't Instagram. I'm on Flutter. I haven't checked it in two weeks. <laughs> but I'm there. Uh, Chris actually said that she gets her foreign affairs subscription on her Kindle because she can't get the articles online. Well, there you go. I mean, she's got something specialized. So, yeah, I can see that. Like, if you were, for some reason, what? I have to get the Wall Street Journal. You know, again, it's coming from the other end like we were Why? talking about. Well, some people have to get the Wall Street Journal because they're into business. They have to get the Wall Street Journal because they grew up with the idea of the Wall Street Journal existing. And maybe it doesn't need to exist anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Nobody likes change. Um, I just made so many people angry. Did you guys see my tweet? I was standing in line at the uh, IGA up the hill here in Beachview. And and, uh, the the check reader, first of all, so many people paying with check in front of me. Up at the IGA. And, That's weird. And then and, and they put the, through that machine that scans it, it voids it, and hands it back. So what's the point of you writing out that check to begin with, I say? Mm. You know, and taking all, all of our time. Um, and, and the guy's like, man, computers taking all of our jobs. That's what's wrong with America, computers. Yeah, that's a pretty, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, I could Did talk about that for so face? long. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I many have. things. Did you? Uh, no, because he has. There was a nice lady between us. Oh, yes. So I leave you guys with that. I'm over at Sorgatron.com. <laughs> I'm over at Sorgatron.com, Mike Sorg.com, Sorgatronmedia.com for everything else going on here. Uh, there's going to be some exciting stuff. Pittsburgh Comic Con's coming up. We will be there uh, with a booth. So come <laughs> say hi. <laughs> you could take the North Shore connector to get there. To to. To the Comic Con? In one way. No, it's in Monroeville. <laughs> you can use it. I'm sure you can. That's why we built it, right? So everybody can use it to get <laughs> I, I am already the mayor of one of the new uh, stations. Really? Yes, I am. I've been there twice. <laughs> I haven't been on it yet. I'm really excited. All right, here's to how you my can do it. Dollars at work. Here's how you can do it. Hmm. Missy can drop you off downtown. Drive over to the North Shore. <laughs> you can take the the subway to the North Shore. And then drive to Monroeville. There you go. See? Told you you could use it. Why are we or, Why are we even... Or, or, you can take the trolley from the up the street, and Missy can drive to Northside. Yep. Why are we incorporating this? What we should do is start a whole campaign to convince people to unnecessarily incorporate the subway into their commute, just to point <laughs> out how ridiculous it is. <laughs> Like, to get to my studio, which is a mile from my house, which is approximately two miles from downtown, I will go downtown, get on the connector. In the free zone. Go, go to the north side, and then come back downtown, and then go to my studio. But at no point do I go directly from my house to the studio. <laughs> and of course, this is a big Pittsburgh issue that... That nobody else is going to care about if they're not yeah, here. But it's hilarious. So, but yeah, there you go. The North. It, hey, you know. Um, guys, anyways, this is the awesome cast. We're here live every Tuesday. If you want to join us here at 7 p.m. Eastern, <sighs> live.sorgatronmedia.com. So you can yell funny things in the chat room like Riz IUP. Um, oh, yeah. Did they say anything? I just assume they don't have anything good to say. That's why they don't send us any email and they just hang out in the chat room like trolls. <laughs> 
<laughs> which is illegal oh, in Arizona. Yeah. Which is illegal in Arizona, as we learned on Source for it earlier today. Oh yeah. But don't email us. Send us something. Just if you, can, I want you to, if you're listening, and you've enjoyed the show for a while, just email us at contact at awesomecast.com and just say hi. Yeah, just say hi. Send so me a picture of your penis. It's fine. Uh, you can send that over. I'm sure the email is over at robjdlc.com. You can it's going to reroute to your inbox oh, in like no. five seconds. Uh, you can tweet us at awesomecast. Uh, tag this episode, AC96, if you have any commentary. Over on the Google Plus, there's been a lot of discussion. Uh, I know. Has there? There's people using Google Plus? Yeah, there's people using Google Plus. We got one or two people that talk to us. What? On there. <laughs> That's a conversation, you know. What's up, Nero? There's one or two people. Nero's a fan of it. I, I'm, I've been uh, finding uses for it. One um, or two people. Yeah, there's people. There's people there. My use for Google Plus, um, it has so you know something has to be in that spot of a social media network that I'm currently a member of, but I do not use. <laughs> and that's and that's where you uh, where you take that stand, huh? Yeah, cur- currently being filled by Google Plus and Pinterest. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm at Pinterest and I'm kind of like with the Plurk thing, haven't used it for like two weeks. Yeah. Right. My wife keeps keeps pinning stuff to me, but it's like. I really need to get in there and see those things. All right. Yeah. So, hey, it's been the Awesome Cast. Thanks to our awesome chat room. Uh, You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. You guys do a show. I'm just going to sit here and play Draw Something on the iPad. Aww. I've got a few. Would you like one? I've got one for me and one for you. Maybe somebody oh, else would like one. They multiply. It's crazy. <laughs> iPad for everybody. That's awesome. A- the noise comes from the clapboard. But you're supposed to mark it. Awesome cast. Episode. I don't have any chalk. Get the man some chalk. You can only say I don't have chalk either. Why would I have chalk? Because you have clapboards. <laughs> it's true. If you have a clapboard, you should have chalk. I'll have to purchase some chalk. Do I have to get special clapboard chalk? Nope. Nope. Just okay. regular chalky chalk. Yep. I'm not. I'm not sure if it, the chalk will work on that. It will. Regular it, baby killing. It seems like just a piece of wood. Talc from chalk. Like it doesn't seem like any sort of chalkboard. It was just wood, and I'm pretty sure it was pretty cheap. Wood. Wood'll. It'll work on wood. Okay. Okay. You can put it down now.